Hello everybody, this is Mika Seppele. This picture shows the graph of a function, which is a black curve, and those of its Taylor polynomials centered at various points of the x-axis. Taylor polynomials approximate this function pretty well near the point at which they are centered, but as you go far away from the center of the Taylor polynomial, then the approximation fails to work. In this video I will discuss how to find Taylor polynomials and Taylor series and how to use them. Start by recalling certain basic Maclaurin series. The simplest interesting Maclaurin series is the geometric series where the ratio of two subsequent terms is always x, so that is the series summation k from 0 to the infinity x to the power k. The sum of this geometric series is the function 1 divided by 1 minus x, and this uh, series converges and represents this function if and only if the absolute value of x is strictly less than 1. The exponential function can be represented as summation k from 0 to the infinity x to the power k divided by k factorial. This series converges for all values of x and represent the exponential fu function for all values of x. The sine function is represented by the Maclaurin series summation k from 0 to the infinity negative 1 to the power k x to the power 2 times k plus 1 divided by 2 times k plus 1 factorial. And this series converges and represents the sine function for all values of x. The cosine function is represented by the series summation k from 0 to the infinity negative 1 to the power k, x to the power 2 times k divided by 2 times k factorial, and this representation is also valid for all values of x. The function 1 plus x to the power p has the series expansion 1 plus p times x plus p times p minus 1 divided by 2 factorial times x squared plus p times p minus 1 times p minus 2 divided by 3 factorial times x cubed plus and so forth. This series expansion is uh, valid if the absolute value of x is less than 1, and then it represents the function 1 plus x to the power p. This is called the binomial series. Observe that the special case p equals negative 1 gives um, the geometric series where the ratio of two subsequent terms is negative of x, and uh, this power p can be any number, it doesn't need to be an integer, for example. Taylor series of a function f at x equals a of the form summation k from 0 to the infinity, case derivative of f evaluated at a divided by k factorial times x minus a to the power k. The special case where a equals 0 is called Maclaurin series. Now Taylor polynomials of a function f at x equals a, or Taylor polynomials of f centered at a, are partial sums of its Taylor series at that point. When we compute with functions by replacing them by Taylor series, then the practical computations will always be done by using Taylor polynomials instead of series. Taylor polynomials are um, finite objects and we can perform computations with them easily while computing with Taylor series is more complicated. I will start by some general comments about how we can get qualitative information regarding the Taylor series just by looking at the graph of a function. Here you see the graph of a function, red curve, and we look at the graph of the function near the point x equals 1.5, and we try to understand some qualitative behavior of the Taylor series of this function centered at x equals 1.5. First of all, the line tangent to the graph of the function at x equals 1.5 points down. This means that the first derivative of the function is negative at the point x equals 1.5. Also, the graph of this function at the point x equals 1.5 and near that point lies below its tangent line. This means that uh, the graph of this function is concave down, 
near this point x equals 1.5 and this means that the second derivative of this function is negative at this point x equals 1.5. So we conclude simply by looking at the graph that the first derivative of f at 1.5 is negative and that also the second derivative of f at 1.5 is negative. This means that if we look at the Taylor series of this function centered at x equals 1.5, then the first degree term and the second degree term both have negative coefficients. This is indeed the case. For this particular function, the approximation of the Taylor series at x equals 1.5 is 3.0 minus 2.4 times x minus 1.5 minus 1.1 times x minus 1.5 squared and so on. So this is the Taylor polynomial of degree 2 or rather an approximation of it. You see that the first order term and the second order term both have negative coefficients. A related quiz question would be that are the coefficients of the first and second order terms of the Maclaurin series of this function negative or positive? Think about it. I will get back to that in the end of this video. Let us next take a look at how these Taylor polynomials centered at various points work when it comes to approximating the value of the function. Here the black curve is the graph of a function and the red curve is the Taylor polynomial now centered at x equals negative 5. Near the point x equals negative 5, the approximation is pretty good because you cannot separate the black curve from the red curve, but far away from negative 5, the approximation fails miserably. Here the approximation is at the point x equals negative 4, and you see that it works very, very well near that point, but just like the approximation at the point negative 5 fails when we go far away from the point negative 4. And here is the approximation at the point negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So all these approximations, they work very well near the point at which these Taylor polynomials are centered but then they cannot be used far away from that particular point. And here is uh, the view of all of these approximations. They can be useful at various parts of the graph, but uh, no one approximation works all over this graph. And this is when the Taylor polynomials are of degree 5. So depending on where we are, we may have to use Taylor polynomials centered at different points. And when we do that, if we choose the point at which the Taylor polynomial is centered, we do get good approximations, but uh, we cannot use them far away from the point at which these polynomials are centered. In this example, we look at uh, the sine function and its Taylor polynomial of degree 5 centered at the origin and our task is to estimate the error of the approximation. Sine of x is approximately x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the power 5 over 5 factorial on this interval from negative 1 to 1. This picture shows the graph of the sine function, which is the blue curve, and that of this polynomial of degree 5, which is the red curve. On the interval from negative 1 to 1, the approximation seems to be pretty good. Now, the error is sine of x minus x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. We substitute in place of sine its uh, Taylor series and we, and we obtain that the Taylor series for this error is negative x to the seventh over 7 factorial plus x to the ninth over 9 factorial minus and so forth. The Maclaurin series, that is the Taylor series centered at uh, the origin for the sine function is alternating, hence the error of this approximation is of absolute value strictly less 
than the absolute value of the first term left out. Now the error is uh, the absolute value of sine of x minus the expression x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial and this absolute value is now strictly less than the absolute value of x to the power 7 over 7 factorial. And when x is between negative 1 and 1, the absolute value of x to the power 7 is at most 1 to the power 7, which is 1. Therefore, on this interval from negative 1 to 1, the error is bounded by 1 over 7 factorial, which is 1 over 5040. So we got a pretty good approximation for the sine function with uh, not uh, much work at all. We simply used three first terms of the Taylor series of the sine function centered at the origin. To find Taylor series of functions which are more complicated than the basic ones, we may use substitution, we may differentiate a non-series term by term, we may integrate a non-series term by term, we may add, divide and multiply known series. The division happens using this inverted polynomial division algorithm that applies just as well for Taylor series as it does for polynomials. We may combine all these tricks to find uh, Taylor series or Taylor polynomials for pretty complicated functions. In this problem, our task is to evaluate the 101st derivative of the function e to the negative x squared at the origin. We wish to do that without having to differentiate 101 times. That would be pretty awkward. And we do that by Taylor series. Now remember that the derivatives of this function e to the negative x squared evaluated at zero appear as parts of the coefficients of the Taylor series. So, we start with the Taylor series for the exponential function e to the t. That is summation k from 0 to the infinity, t to the power k divided by k factorial. Then we substitute here t equals negative x squared. We get that e to the negative x squared is summation k from 0 to the infinity, t to the power k, that is negative x squared raised to the power k divided by k factorial. But negative x squared to the power k is simply negative 1 to the power k times x to the power 2 times k. Therefore, the Taylor series for e to the negative x squared is summation k from 0 to the infinity. Negative 1 to the power k, x to the power 2 times k divided by k factorial. And now we observe that the series that we obtained, e to the negative x squared equals summation k from 0 to the infinity, negative 1 to the power k, x to the power 2 times k divided by k factorial, contains only even degree terms. This means that the odd degree terms must have zero coefficient. And this is only possible if the odd degree derivatives of this function f at the origin take the value zero. And in particular, we observe that the 101st derivative of f evaluated at the origin must therefore be zero. So the Taylor series centered at the origin for e to the negative x squared was summation k from zero to the infinity, negative one to the power k, x to the power two times k divided by k factorial. The degree 100 term of this series cor corresponds to the value k equals 50, because then we get x to the power 2 times 50, which is x to the power 100. Therefore, this degree 100 term of this Taylor series at the origin for e to the negative x squared is minus 1 to the power 50 divided by 50 factorial times x to the power 100. And of course, negative 1 to the power 50 is just 1. Therefore, this term of degree 100 for this Taylor series is x to the power 100 divided by 50 factorial. For any function, the coefficients of the degree 100 term of its Taylor series centered at the origin is the 100th derivative of that function evaluated at the origin divided by 100 factorial. Therefore, this 
for this particular function e to the negative x squared, we get that its hundredth derivative at zero divided by hundred factorial must therefore be one divided by fifty factorial. And this means that the hundredth derivative of the function e to the negative x squared evaluated at the origin is 100 factorial divided by 50 factorial. This can be slightly simplified, but the expressions get very long if we start cancel common terms. Therefore, it is more convenient to leave it in this form. So if now our task would have been to compute the hundredth derivative of e to the negative x squared, then we would do that by Taylor series and we obtained that the hundredth derivative at the origin is 100 factorial divided by 50 factorial. In order to estimate the value of the integral from 0 to 1 half of square root 1 plus x to the power 5 dx with error less than 1 over 10 million, we have to replace the function square root 1 plus x to the power 5 by its suitable Taylor polynomial. In order to find this Taylor polynomial centered at the origin that works, we use the binomial series, which is 1 plus t to the power p equals 1 plus p times t plus p times p minus 1 divided by 2 factorial t squared plus p times p minus 1 times p minus 2 divided by 3 factorial times t cubed plus and so forth. We insert here p equals 1 half and t equals x to the power 5 and we get that square root of 1 plus x to the power 5 equals 1 plus x to the fifth over 2 minus 1 divided by 2 squared times 2 factorial times x to the power 10 plus 1 minus 2 times 1 minus 4 divided by 2 cubed times 3 factorial times x to the power 15 minus and so forth. This is an, almost an alternating series. The first two terms are positive, but after that the terms alternate. And it turns out that this is just enough to estimate this integral with the required precision. So we estimate the integral from 0 to 1 half of square root 1 plus x to the power 5 dx by replacing this function square root 1 plus x to the power 5 by its Taylor series. And the Taylor series that we just computed simplifies to 1 plus x to the power 5 divided by 2 minus x to the power 10 divided by 8 plus x to the power 15 divided by 16 minus and so forth. Now we integrate this series from 0 to 1 half with respect to x and we can do this integration by integrating it term by term. So we may do that. The integral of 1 from 0 to 1 half dx is just 1 half. The integral of x to the power 5 divided by 2 from 0 to 1 half is substitution from 0 to 1 half x to the power 6 over 12. And then the integral of x to the power 10 over 8 from 0 to 1 half is substitution from 0 to 1 half to x to the power 11 over 88. And the last term shown here gives us x to the power 16 over 16 squared and substitution from 0 to 1 half. When we perform these substitutions, we get that the integral from 0 to 1 half square root 1 plus x to the power 5 dx equals 1 half plus 1 over 12 times 2 to the power 6 minus 1 over 88 times 2 to the power 11 plus 1 over 16 squared times 2 to the power 16 minus and so forth. And this series that we obtained for the value of this integral from 0 to 1 half square root 1 plus x to the power 5 dx is alternating except for the first term. If we leave the first term 1 half out, then the rest of the series is a no normal alternating series that satisfies the alternating series test. That is, the absolute values of its term form a decreasing sequence with limit 0. And this means that this series converges by the alternating series test and that when we replace this series by its finite partial sum, then the error that we make is less than the absolute value of the first term left out. The desired accuracy was that the error had to be less than 1 over 10 million. Now we know that if we cut the series at some point, 
then the error is of absolute value less than the absolute value of the first term left out. So we compute with a calculator or a computer and we observe that 88 times to the power 11 is a little over 180,000. That doesn't yet provide enough accuracy, but 16 squared times to the power 16 is over 16 million. Therefore, if we compute with three terms and the first term left out is 1 divided by 16 squared times to the power 16, then the error that we make is less than 1 over 10 million. It is actually less than 1 over 16 million. And we conclude that for this required accuracy, three terms suffice. So we compute that the three terms are 1 half plus 1 over 12 times to the power 6 minus 1 over 88 times to the power 11. And this is approximately 0.501 six five three it turns out when computing with more precision that all other digits except the last one are correct in this approximation already so we got a very good approximation at uh, not much work at all let me now return to the quiz question that i posted in the beginning of this presentation so here we consider a function whose graph is shown, it is the red curve. And the question is that are the coefficients of the first and second order terms of the Maclaurin series of this function negative or positive? We can answer such a qualitative question simply by looking at the graph of this function. We first observe that the function is increasing near x equals zero, that is, its tangent at x equals 0 has a positive slope. This means that the derivative of the function f must be positive at x equals 0. Also, the graph of this function f lies below its tangent line at x equals 0 and near x equals 0. This means that the graph of this function is concave down at x equals 0 and near that point. And this, on the other hand, means that the second derivative must be negative. So we conclude that since the function is increasing at x equals 0 and near x equals 0, the first derivative must be positive, and since the graph is concave down, the second derivative must be negative of this function at 0. And this means that the first order term of the Maclaurin series has a positive coefficient, and the second order term has a negative coefficient. To summarize the discussion, we may find the Taylor series of functions starting by the Taylor series of the basic functions and then we may use substitutions. We may differentiate series term by term and we may integrate series term by term and then we may finally add, divide and multiply non-series and then we may combine any of these steps and perform them several times as needed. Once we have found Taylor series, we may use Taylor series to estimate the values of functions on an interval and we may compute limits of functions by replacing the functions by the Taylor polynomials and we may approximate integrals by replacing the functions by the suitably high degree Taylor polynomials and we may study properties of the function in question by simply studying its Taylor polynomials. In particular, the integration part is very powerful, and we may approximate definite integrals of complicated functions quickly by replacing the functions by the Taylor polynomials. And uh, this is often the best way to integrate or to approximate definite integrals of complicated functions may be the only way.